everybody. I'm Matthew Laria, and you're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we'll get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we ask you today for revelation of your Word. We ask you today for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice, and to see it produce in our lives. And Father, I release my faith today over everybody watching the broadcast. And I thank you, Lord, for ministering to them today through this broadcast in a great and in a mighty way. Father, I thank you for giving them answers to questions and solutions to problems, grace and provision and help for their lives and for the things they're facing in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, last time on the broadcast, we started a new series that we're calling Faith to be Healed. And in this teaching, we are uh, going to the Word of God and endeavoring to cultivate a stronger degree, a higher level of faith, specifically to receive healing for your body. Now let's go over to Acts chapter 14 again, and let's look at our foundation uh, scripture there. Acts 14, and uh, in verse 8, it says, There sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb, who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Say that with me, friend, faith to be healed. Paul said with a loud voice, stand upright on your feet, and the man leaped and walked. And so this man who had never walked a day in his life. He was crippled from the womb. He was supernaturally healed this on that day. And his faith to be healed was a key component in receiving his healing. In fact, without faith to be healed, he never would have been healed. Now, faith to be healed, we're going to talk about this uh, more on the upcoming episodes. But faith to be healed is talking about specific confidence that God can heal me and that God will heal me. And that's what that man had. Now, last time on the broadcast, we said that faith to be healed begins with believing that your God is a healing God. That is a, that is a key component in being confident that God can heal you or that God will heal you. In other words, if you don't believe God's a healing God, you're never going to be confident that He can and will heal you. Now, another key to receiving uh, healing and a key component in cultivating faith to be healed is believing that healing is God's will for you. There are some people who believe, well, yeah, God can heal. And there are others that even believe, yeah, he can and he will heal some people. But a lot of people don't have confidence that healing is God's will for me. Healing is his will for my life. And friend, if you don't believe healing is God's will for you, you'll never get to the place where you're confident that God can and will heal you because in the back of your mind, you'll always be thinking, well, I'm not sure it's God's will for me to be healed or I'm not sure if healing is God's will for me. And so if you want to uh, cultivate faith to be healed, it stands on those two realities. Number one, my God, I believe my God is a healing God. And number two, I believe healing is God's will for me. And on those two realities, faith to be healed is built. So come on, say it with me today as, as you're watching the broadcast. I believe my God is a healing God. And I believe healing is God's will for me. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 8. And we're going to look at some scriptures again today to uh, get you rooted in the reality that healing is God's will for you. Matthew chapter 8 in verse 2, it says there, Behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, worshipped Jesus, 
saying, Lord, if you will, if you will, you can make me clean. Now, this guy believed that Jesus could make him clean. But he was lacking confidence about whether or not Jesus would make him clean. And so Jesus, in this next statement, he is going to destroy all doubt about healing being his will for this leper. See, this guy knows Jesus can, but he's not sure he will. And see, if he's going to receive his healing, then he's got to get rid of this lack of certainty about healing being God's will for his life. We've got to des destroy that uncertainty. And he's got to get confidence, confident that healing is God's will for my life. Because right now he's not sure. <laughs> he just knows he can. Jesus can heal him, but he's not sure he will. And so what did Jesus say? He said, I will. Let me read you the verse. Verse 3, it said, Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And so when it, come, when it came to healing this leper, Jesus' attitude was, I will. Now, many believe sometimes God says, I won't. What am I saying? Many believe that, that when some people come to God for healing, that God says, it's not my will to heal you. But here again in this verse, we have the opposite thing going on. We have somebody coming to Jesus for healing and Jesus saying, I will. It's my will to heal you. Praise God. The, the Phillips translation says it like this. If you want to, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and placed it on the leper saying, of course I want to. And friend, that is God's attitude about healing. Of course I want to. I'm a God who heals. I'm a God who takes sickness away from the midst of my people. Of course I want to. And friend, that is God's attitude concerning healing you, concerning healing any of his people. Of course I want to. You can just hear the heart of the Father. And I love the way the Phillips translation says that. What did the leper say? He said in the Phillips translation, he says, if you want to, Jesus, you can make me clean. Jesus, can't you just hear Jesus seeing it? Can't you just see uh, love in his eyes and hear love in his voice? Jesus stretched out his hand, placed it on the leper and said, of course I want to. <laughs> I'm anointed to heal. Praise God. That's one of the things that my father sent me to do. He anointed me to heal. Of course I want to. Praise the Lord. And so you begin to get a picture into, into the reality that healing is God's will for your life. Well, why would, why would his will uh, for you be any different than this man with leprosy? It's not. And if it was, that would make him a respecter of persons. But God's no respecter of persons. Anybody that comes to him in faith and is living for him and following him, anybody in his family... Of course he wants to heal them. Praise the Lord. And in fact, you know, God likes to heal the sinners too. They just need to get saved and submit to him and trust him and he'll heal them too. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Now go with me to Psalm 35, verse 27. Psalm 35, 27, it says this. Uh, oh, excuse me. I got, got a little bit ahead of myself. Let's go to 3 John 2. 3 John, and let's look at verse 2 there. And it says there, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And this was um, John writing a letter to Gaius, but we know it's not just a man writing a letter to another man. It's the inspired word of God. And we are God's beloved. And friend, when you love someone, you want to see them healed in their body and doing well. You don't want to see them hurting and in pain. And we are God's beloved. And what did the scriptures say? Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. And so you can see from that verse that God wants his people to be in health. Psalm 35, 27 says this, Let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure 
in the prosperity of his servant. Now, if you look up that word prosperity in the Hebrew, you run into the word health or to be in good health. Now, it's a big word. It means other things. But one of the things it means, prosperity means to be in health or to be in good health. You see, a lot of people have the wrong idea about prosperity. They don't know what it means. And uh, they think when, when they hear the word prosperity, all they think about is money. But prosperity means to do well. And when you're doing well in your body, you're healed and strong in your body. And that verse is saying that the Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity or in the health and the good health of his people. He takes pleasure in it. He likes it when his people are healed and whole and strong in their body. Come on, friends, say it with me again. My God is a healing God. And then what are we talking about today? Say this with me. And healing is his will for my life. Praise the Lord. Um, you see this play out uh, in Deuteronomy in the 28th chapter. Um, in the first part of that chapter, it started off by God telling his people, if you hearken to my voice and obey me, all these blessings will come on you. And it's interesting that when you, when you read all the blessings that, that God said would come on his people, you never come across uh, sickness or disease as a blessing. And the reason I say that is because there's a whole lot of Christians that will tell you, well, no, sometimes this, this, this sickness or disease or this cancer was a blessing in disguise um, there, is no, there is no sickness and disease uh, in the blessing. Uh, there's strength, there's prosperity, there's increase, there's things like that, but there is no sickness and disease in the blessing because sickness and disease is not a blessing. Now you get down to the 15th verse of that chapter in Deuteronomy 28, and it says, if you don't obey me, all these curses will come on you and overtake you. And, and one of the things that you see repeated over and over again in the curse is sickness and disease. In fact, in the 61st verse of that chapter, it says, Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon you. Now, um, you can see that sickness and disease, he's talking about curses. And so when he's talking about all these sicknesses coming on you, all these disease coming on you, those are curses. Sickness and disease is a curse. It's not something good. It's not a blessing in disguise. It's a curse. It's something bad. It's something that's working to break down your body, cause you to leave your body, cause you to, to hurt or be in pain or die early. Sickness and disease is a curse. Now, why do I keep drilling that home? Because in Galatians 3.13, it says that Christ became a curse for us so that the blessing of Abraham would come on us. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us so that the blessing of Abraham would come on us. What is that telling us? God doesn't want you cursed. He wants you blessed. And sickness and disease is a curse. And so God doesn't want you sick and, and infirmed and diseased in your body. No healing is his will for your life. Praise the Lord. Um, over in Ezekiel chapter 34, I know I'm going through a number of scriptures today, but we're driving home this reality. Healing is God's will for my life. Uh, he takes pleasure in my prosperity. Uh, he wishes above all things that I prosper and be in good health. Jesus told the leper, of course I want to. And sickness and disease is a curse and God doesn't want me cursed. He wants me blessed. Now in Ezekiel chapter 34, God was correcting what he called uh, the shepherds of the people. He was called the people the sheep. And he was calling these leaders of the people in that day the shepherds. And he was correcting these shepherds because uh, according to God, they had been bad shepherds. And one of the things that made them bad shepherds um, in verse 4, it said, The diseased you've not strengthened, neither have you healed that which is sick. And so uh, that is characteristic of a bad shepherd. A bad shepherd doesn't heal his sheep. 
Now, down here in verse 16, God said this. He said, I will bind up that which was broken, and I will strengthen that which was sick. And then in John 10, 11, Jesus said, I am a good shepherd. <laughs> and so, friend, you are your father's sheep. He is a good shepherd, and a good shepherd heals. I mean, what kind of God would God be if he corrected these shepherds in Israel and rebuked them for not healing the uh, sheep when they were sick, and then he went and did the same thing? No, he doesn't do the same thing. He said, I am a good shepherd. And then in, again in Ezekiel 34, 16, he said, I will bind up that which is broken and I will strengthen that which is sick. And so our God is a good shepherd and healing is what the shepherd wants for the sheep. It's his will for the sheep. Praise the Lord. Um, praise God. Now, Let's go to Matthew chapter 9, I believe. Come on, friends, say it with me today. Healing is God's will for my life. My God is a healing God. Uh, in, the, in the 13th chapter of the book of Luke, uh, you don't have to go there. There was a woman that, a woman that was uh, bowed over and she had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years. And Jesus healed her on the Sabbath. And the religious people of the day had a problem with that. And Jesus responded to them in the 16th verse by saying, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? He said, ought, ought not, or shouldn't she be loosed? And why? Because she's a daughter of Abraham. And friend, I just wanted to reference that to you because, see, when you are in covenant with God, when you're one of God's people, God's attitude towards you is you're supposed to be healed. Healing belongs to you. And that's what Jesus was saying in this verse about this woman. They're over, her, over here complaining about doing it on the Sabbath. And Jesus said, she's the seed of Abraham. She's supposed to be healed. And no matter what day it is. And again, you can see that healing is God's will for his people. And, and the truth about it is this, if you truly do know the Father, it becomes obvious to you that healing is His will for His people. If you truly know who God is, it, be, it becomes obvious to you, of course healing's His will. He's a good God. He loves His people. It's not, it's not this big controversial topic that ignorant Christians have tried to make it. No, God is a God of love. He loves you. He takes pleasure in your prosperity. He wants to see you healed in your body. He's a good shepherd. A good shepherd heals. And, and like he told the, the, the religious people of the day, she's supposed to be healed. She's a daughter of Abraham. And friend, if you and I be Christ, which we are, then we are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, and we are supposed to be healed too, praise the Lord. Now, um, one thing that I, I, I came across in Scripture as the Lord was, and I, as I was preparing for the broadcast, that really uh, blessed me, coupled with this idea that, that God is a God who heals, and healing is His will uh, for my life. Well, if that's the case, then there has to be uh, power that heals people's body. And healing in the body is repair work on an existing structure. It's like going to the, the mechanic when you have something wrong with your car. You're getting some repair work done. And that's all healing is. Healing is just repair work on an existing structure. Now, the manufacturer of anything can also repair anything wrong that goes wrong with the thing that they produced or manufactured. And so if uh, somebody produces a car, creates a car, Ford creates trucks, I drive a Ford truck. Well, then if I take that truck back to Ford, they can fix anything on the truck because they're the ones that built the truck. And God is the one that created your body. <laughs> Are you seeing what I'm saying here, friend? And so anything that goes wrong with your body, um, repair work can be done. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so say this with me. God does repair work 
on people's bodies. Say it with me again. God does repair work on people's bodies. If he's the one that created it, well, then certainly he can repair it. And we see this throughout scripture in Matthew chapter 9. It talked about two blind men who followed Jesus. And um, it said that Jesus touched their eyes and their eyes were healed. And so they needed repair work on their eyes. Their eyes didn't work right. But Jesus healed their eyes. In Mark chapter 7, uh, verse 32, let me just read this to you. It said, They brought unto him one that was deaf and had impotent and impotent in his speech. Verse 33 said, Jesus put his fingers into his ears and spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said, Be open. And straightway his ears were opened and the string of his tongue was loosed and he spoke plain. Come on, friends, say it again. God does repair work. <laughs> this guy's ears weren't working, but God repaired his ears. Uh, in the previous example with the two blind men, in Matthew 9, 27, it says, When Jesus departed, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus said, Do you believe I'm able to do this? And they said, Yea, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. And so Jesus does repair work on people's eyes and people's ears. We read about it in Acts chapter 14 when we started the broadcast today. That man that was impotent, uh, are crippled, excuse me, from his mother's womb. What, what's wrong with him? Uh, his legs don't work. He might have had been paralyzed in his spine or whatever, but his legs don't. His legs needed some repair. But God does repair work. Praise the Lord. The leper that we referenced earlier in the broadcast, he needed something removed from his body. Well, the good news is God does repair work and he can go into people's bodies and remove what needs to be removed. The woman with the issue of blood, her blood needed a repair. She had a blood problem. Praise the Lord. But God does repair work. And friend, let me encourage you today. The same God that did repair work back in all these scriptures, he's the same today. And if you got something wrong with your body, repairs can be made. <laughs> Praise God. And God can repair it in such a way that it was better uh, it, it's better after he repaired it than it was before something went wrong with it. You understand what I'm saying? He can fix it so it works better than it ever worked before. Praise the Lord. Say it with me. My God is a God who does repair work on people's bodies. Praise the Lord. Um, now let's go to Luke chapter 5 and we'll close it there today. Luke chapter 5. Aren't you thankful, friend, that your God is a God who heals Healing is his will for you, and he does repair work on people's bodies. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, friend, you need to get stirred up about this. Whatever hasn't been working in your body, it can work right. It doesn't matter however many years it hasn't worked right. We got people in Scripture that were lame from the womb or, you know, had an issue of blood 12 years or a spirit of infirmity 18 years. It doesn't matter how long it hasn't been working right it can work right again. You serve a God who heals. Healing is his will for you. And he does repair work on people's bodies. Praise the Lord. Now, in Mark chapter 5, one thing that, that the scripture brings out, and I believe we'll look at it later on uh, in this teaching, but it's talking about the woman with the issue of blood. And it says that when, when, uh, when the woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus, Jesus knew that virtue or power had left him or went out of him. The word virtue, it says in the King James, uh, that word literally means power. And so there is power that heals. I want to say it like this, there's power that repairs. And so the power that was in him, it left him or was drawn out of him and went into her and fixed her blood problem. And we see this idea in other scriptures in Luke chapter 5 verse 17, uh, it says it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And so there, there's power that repairs. 
There's power that fixes stuff that's wrong with your body. Um, when Adam sinned, death entered our body, our bodies, our man's body. And before he sinned, this body was never going to die. But when he sinned, it was, it was cursed with the force of death. And that's, that's what causes the body to age and break down and waste away. Well, that was never God's original plan. And so this body right here, you know, I mean, if you're over, you know, the age of 25, you know, or 30, you're, you, you are sensing the effects of aging in your body. Now, we believe that your youth can be renewed like the eagles. and You can be strong in an old age. But you can't avoid the fact in this life that this body, is, it ages, it gets older. It's just part of uh, what happened. Now, the scripture talks about how we're going to get this body back, but it's going to be glorified. And what that means is that when Jesus returns to the earth, that, that anybody that's saved and has went home to be at the Lord or, or was in heaven or on the earth, you're going to get a different body, but it's going to be a body that's glorified. It's going to be a body that, that is immortal. It's an immortal body. It's an incorruptible body. It won't age. It can't be uh, corrupted or destroyed. It won't get sick. Um, the best shape your body was in in your earthly life, um, that'll look like trash compared to what your glorified body is. Now, why am I talking about that? It's because the scripture says in, in Romans 8, 11, that if the spirit of God of him that raised Jesus from the dead shall dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. And so it's the spirit of God that's going to take mortal and make it immortal. It's the spirit of God that's going to take this uh, corruptible and make it incorruptible. The power of God, the spirit of God, when Jesus returns, is going to touch my body it's going to kiss my body with glory, and this body is going to be susceptible to aging or decay ever again. Now, if the power of God is capable of doing that, it's capable of fixing a hurt back. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? It's capable of fixing some deaf ears or some blind eyes or getting cancer out of somebody. If it's capable of, of glorifying this body, then there's power available that can fix this body. And that's what the woman with the issue of blood tapped into, the power that repairs. Praise the Lord. Come on, friends, say it with me. My God is a healing God. Healing is His will for my life. And my God is a God who does repair work on people's bodies. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you today for your healing power at work in our bodies, repairing anything that's wrong, healing anything that needs to be healed. And we do thank you for it. We know that you're a healing God. Healing is your will for our lives. And we are so thankful for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. Now, don't forget to come back next time. We're going to continue this series entitled Faith to be Healed. We'll see you then. Thank you for watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Go to mam.tv to download the free study notes from today's broadcast. You can also request your free copy of our mini book, Faith Declarations. In this book, you'll find declarations from the Word of God that will feed your faith and help you experience victory in your life. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Today's broadcast was made possible by the partners of Matthew Alaria Ministries. Go to mam.tv to become a partner today 